Back in 2016, I was working an IT job that I really did not enjoy, and I had this idea of becoming a photographer. So one day I had had enough, I quit my job and got in my car. And I spent pretty much the next four years living out of my car, driving all across the country, and spending most of that time out in the back country. One of my favorite parts about that experience was the fact that I could see the night sky in so much more clarity. You know, growing up in northeastern Ohio, there's so much light pollution you could barely see the North Star, let alone the Milky Way or anything else. So being out there amongst the sand dunes or the deserts or the forests, whatever it was, it was always amazing to see all this new detail in the sky that I never could before. And this is ultimately what led me to get into astrophotography. I found myself in all these amazing locations and with the dark skies, I really wanted to capture what I was seeing in better detail. And that led me to getting a star tracker, in my case, the Skyguider Pro. At the time, there really wasn't much good information out there on how to use it. So I had to pretty much figure everything out on my own. Even the manufacturer's videos and manuals and things were pretty terrible. And that's really how this YouTube channel started. I wanted to make the next person coming after me, I wanted to make their life a little bit easier by showing them what worked for me and how exactly to set things up and do things. Because at the time when I was doing it, there really wasn't much out there. And based on the feedback I've been getting, I think I did a fairly good job. So there's that. But one of the questions I've been getting a lot, especially recently, is why don't you upgrade? You know, you've got this Skyguider Pro, that's great. You can do Milky Way, you can do some deep space. But if you really want to take things to the next level, you pretty much need to get a go-to mount, if nothing else. And, you know, when I was living out of the car, that just wasn't an option because there was no way to fit a go-to mount in a car that I'm sleeping in and living out of. But recently, a, a lot's changed, and some of it came about through unfortunate circumstances, which we'll talk about. Uh, but I've got some exciting news that I want to share with you guys today. So a few days ago, I got an email that one of my followers here on YouTube was not doing so well, and he was in the ICU. And one of the things he wanted to do was uh, give me some of his astro gear. And unfortunately, he passed away earlier this week, and uh, he left a lot of stuff behind. And so I want to thank Steve Chestnut. He's the one who made all this possible. And also his wife, Patricia, and their daughter. They were uh, very kind. And oddly enough, they lived a minute away here in Kanab. I didn't even realize that they moved here to town, and they were so close. But I guess that's just how things go sometimes. So thanks to Steve and Patricia, I now have the next level. <laughs> and it's pretty big and heavy, but there it is. This is the Skywatcher EQ6 R Pro. And this is gonna be a game changer for me because like I said, with a Skyguider Pro, you can do quite a bit, but at a point you just run into a wall. And I really felt like I hit that wall recently. So with the help of this big guy, once I figure out how to use it, uh, it's really gonna change a lot. And one of the things I'm most excited about is the fact that I can finally start helping people out with how to use this gear. Because as I mentioned before, that's really been the whole focus of everything I've done for the last probably three years, is I wanna make people's lives easier when it comes to astrophotography. So again, I wanna thank Steven and Patricia I know Steve will be watching out for me when I'm trying to set this thing up because I have no idea what I'm doing yet and it's going to be a steep learning curve. But once I learn what I'm doing, I'll be sure to create some tutorials here on YouTube that will hopefully speed up your learning curve as well if you decide to go down this route. That's not all he left me though. We've got something really exciting as well that I know a lot of you uh, are interested in and that's this guy right here. I want to make sure I'm very careful. You might be able to see it right there. It's the Celestron. I guess the abbreviation is Raza. I always saw people talking about that here on YouTube, didn't really know much about it, but I guess I'm gonna learn now. And to be honest, I don't even know the focal length of this guy here. It probably says somewhere. But uh, I mean, just think what I could do with this thing compared to some of my other optics. This is gonna be a game changer and same thing with this, you know, I've never used a telescope like this before. So whatever I learn, I'm gonna be sure to create some tutorials. And hopefully, if you end up getting one yourself, you'll know a little bit better of how to use it and get the best results with that gear. We still got more gear to cover though. 
You know, about a year ago, I bought my first dedicated Astro camera, which was a monochrome sensor. But as you would expect, most people want to go with color camera because the color camera is obviously a lot easier. I didn't have a color camera though, but thanks to Steve again, I now have access to a ASI 294 color camera. This will be a great way to explain how to do your debayering, how to use different filters with a color camera, and a lot more. So that's another exciting addition to the lineup. We've also got the Pole Master. I've gotten a lot of questions about this. I'm sure there's already plenty of tutorials, but I'll see what I can do with it. And we've even got some two inch narrowband filters, which might come in handy with the Space Cat, or maybe this guy as well. I don't even know what filters that's gonna use yet. And one of the cool things he also had was this thing here. I mean, he pretty much built a platform for the Space Cat Guide Scope 1600 mm pro pretty much the same camera i have he's got the asir pro on here and you could easily slide this onto the eq6r and have a nice lightweight little setup that's got everything you need in addition he's got the electronic focuser here which is something i've gotten a lot of questions on it looks like he's already got it up and running so that's great i can test that out and let you know how it works because i've never even used anything like this so steve definitely knew what he was doing when it came to this gear. And it looks like he definitely had a lot of fun with this stuff. And this is kind of a small point, but he even had the William Optics base. I mean, this is my old blue one. He had a red one and I've already switched out for a better color scheme because this blue one, I mean, it works, but it's blue and everything else is red. So if nothing else, I've got a bit of a better color coordinated setup. So that's a nice change. So that's what we're looking at for 2021. I need to spend a lot of time figuring out how to use these different mounts and telescopes and things like that. And thankfully, there's already a lot of great content out there here on YouTube from guys like Astro Backyard, Chuck's Astrophotography, Dylan O'Donnell down there in Australia, and plenty of others out there as well that I can't think of off the top of my head. With the help of them, hopefully they'll help speed up my learning curve, and then in turn I can go on and create some tutorials of my own. So I really want to thank again uh, Patricia Chestnut, her daughter, her son-in-law, and of course Steve who uh, made all this possible. And like I said, he passed away earlier this week. So uh, before we go, I wanted to leave a link to his website because he's got some really amazing photos taken out here in the desert. And I was just thinking, you know, some of these will look great on the wall where you've got the blue rocks and the desert textures and things like that. And uh, if you want to check out his work, Again, you can have the link down there in the description below. I'd recommend checking it out. And that's all I've got for you today. So I just kind of wanted to let you guys know what was up, let you know I finally got an equatorial mount thanks to a generous donation, as well as a Raza telescope, along with a lot of other things that I still have to go through. And uh, it really means a lot to me, you know, that anybody would be willing to give all this stuff away. So thanks again to Steve. I know you'll be <laughs> watching out Make sure I don't drop anything and if I have any problems. That's all I got for you guys today. It might be a little while to the next video because I, of course, need to learn all this. And uh, until then, I'll see you guys and hopefully get some clear skies coming up here. Even here in the desert, it's been very cloudy and windy, so there hasn't been much chance. But if we do get a clear night, I'm really looking forward to using all this stuff. So I'll see you guys in another video.